in this election, one of the important things is that this cannot be a 50.1 general election margin. It just can't. This has to be a moral mandate, a Reagan 1980-style landslide election. Now to presidential politics and the race for the GOP nomination. The entrepreneur Vivek Ramaswamy, who's never before run for any office, has been showing strength in early polls, sometimes coming in third after former President Trump and Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. Our Center Point contributor, Scott Brown, a former Massachusetts senator, spoke with Mr. Ramaswamy this weekend at one of the senator's backyard barbecues he's been hosting. So what was your take after you spoke to all the people? Uh, what really stood out in your mind as, as really the, the, the theme of, of everybody's uh, questioning? Well, one of the themes was people want specificity. And I love that because for the first three, four months of this campaign, I've been introducing who I am and what I stand for. Many people in this country didn't know who I was. But now the questions that I'm getting are, how are you exactly gonna shut down that administrative state? How exactly are you going to reform education? How exactly are you gonna reform our military? So that was the common thread I took away, which means that I'm gonna stop listening to the political consultants who, and I was never listening to them in the first place, who always said, it's too complicated. It's, you know, you gotta simplify it. You gotta dumb it down. No, if you're gonna stand for and speak the truth, the threats and the risks we face as a country right now are complex. And that requires trusting people with the truth, the truth, and even sometimes the complicated truths, the hard truths. And so, you know, the audience reaction, I think, suggests that that's what people are hungry for, and I'm going to keep giving it to them. As you know, President Trump has a very large lead, according to the polls. Uh, I was down 41 points in my race. I ended up winning by seven or eight, so I'm not a big poll guy. Yeah. But let's just say, for argument's sake, that he is the front runner. It appears that he is. How do you plan on taking him and the other party and ultimately getting the nod uh, for the nomination? Well, look, it's the same path, actually, in many ways, that Trump took in 2015 as the outsider. I uh, started this race. Somebody said, you started at 0% in March. I said, no, no, no. I started at 0.0% in March. I'm now polling at a solid third, sometimes second, in these Republican polls heading into even just the first debate. So we're just getting warmed up. But I think in this election, one of the important things is that this cannot be a 50.1 general election margin. It just can't. This has to be a moral mandate, a Reagan 1980-style landslide election. And the difference between 50.1 and a landslide is actually young people, bringing out millennials and even Gen Z, yes, who I believe will rally behind an actual positive vision for this country. So we're on track not just to win this primary, but to deliver a landslide election in the general that will unite this country and that will give me the mandate that I need to see through my vision of shutting down those government agencies, of declaring independence from our enemy, communist China, growing our economy, reviving national pride, that starts with a decisive win in 2024. And frankly, I think I am the only candidate in this field who can actually deliver a true landslide. And for a country that has given me so much, I've lived the American dream, this is my duty, my obligation, my moment to say that I actually have a duty back to this country to pass on that American dream to my two sons and their generation. And that's why we're in this race. Great. Last question. I served in the military for 39 years, retired as a colonel, last four years were at the Pentagon. Uh, suicide in the military is really out of control. And it's actually affecting not only men and women, obviously, but it's affecting even soldiers that have not even been on active duty. First of all, we do a poor job of treating the people who have served this country the most, treating them well on the back end, many of them left on the streets, turning to drug addiction, turning to fentanyl, and then yes, in many cases in that cascade, turning to suicide if the fentanyl itself doesn't accomplish that end. And so I think that one of the things we have to do is, first of all, debureaucratize the VA. Many people have losses and continuity of care when they have finally somebody who's actually helped them find, using not just not psychiatric drugs, forget that, but skills-based training. Places even we're talking here in New Hampshire, I went to Liberty House with programs to actually put people to useful skills back to work, give them that sense of purpose back, stand them on their own two feet, be a productive member of the economy. Right when that's happening, the discontinuity in care in the VA system and otherwise lets people lapse. I think that's unconscionable. And the good news is that's not a partisan problem, that's a fixable problem. That's the kind of leader I wanna be, is somebody who is grounded in ideals, but armed with pragmatism and actually delivering solutions. 
and Senator Scott Brown joins us now. Senator, welcome back to the show. Good to see you. It's great to see you too, Lindsay. Okay, so I think many people have been surprised at how quickly Vivek Ramaswamy has gained momentum in the polls, unlike these other politicians. What was the response from those at your barbecue for our Vivek? Well, we had, uh, according to his count, 467. I added another 75 to 100. So it was well over 550 people there. They were very, very impressed. A 38-year-old uh, self-made person. It was his wife's birthday. She was there. We sang happy birthday. But he answered any and all questions. And it wasn't just a quick soundbite either. The thing that I noticed was a lot different is they spent three to five to seven minutes on every single question from a 10-year-old boy talking about COVID to others talking about how to be energy independent and uh, all every question in between. Uh, it was very impressive. So were the people there supporters of Avek already or were they people who were interested to see who is this guy? What's this momentum this guy is picking up? I'm sure there were a few, but the nature of these barbecues is they are naturally undecided voters, Democrats, Republicans, independents. Some people have never voted before or just checked out of the system. So they come to these barbecues knowing that as I run them, everyone has a fair shot. You know, you come, you know, you're going to get grilled. OK, and they uh, they do. They get grilled and they get asked questions that they may feel uncomfortable about answering, but they ultimately do. And uh, uh, Vivek, I thought, probably handled them the best at this point in terms of how thorough of an answer that he did deliver to all of the, uh, the folks that were there. And, and, and note this in New Hampshire yesterday, thunderstorms in and on and off, on and off. We went inside, started, went outside, inside, and, and finally we ended up outside in a sauna after the, after the rain, obviously. And he just went, took off his jacket, was sweating and answering question after question. Would you say that that is the magic center of him, that he is so personable and spending so much time with these voters? Yeah, I think it's a, a, a very good advantage. Plus, he was well-versed in the law. Uh, you know, we were talking about the border and he, he referenced, you know, the appropriate uh, uh, authorities and issues we have with putting full time military on the border. And uh, when we talked about uh, uh, Taiwan, he talked about the relationship and the agreements we have, uh, obviously, with defending Taiwan. Uh, so he was very well versed. I was impressed with that, not just talking sound, but yeah, I support Israel. He actually talked about the numerous agreements with Israel and how they affect us and how we either need to enforce them or not. Something we've seen Vivek be very outspoken about, he said if he becomes president, he will pardon former President Trump. He's found guilty in these three, potentially four indictments that he's facing. But now, just recently, he said that he would consider actually pardoning Hunter Biden as well if he's found guilty on his charges. How is that sitting with voters in New Hampshire? Yeah, that didn't come up at all. Uh, you know, I haven't heard that up here, like, at all. Uh, you telling me is the first time. But that being said, certainly presidents do have that prerogative. I'm sure that they'll, uh, as we go along and we see what happens with a lot of the indictments and ultimately potentially a trial, uh, that he'll make that decision if, in fact, he gets that far. Senator Scott Brown, thanks for being with us and thanks for giving us this look into your backyard barbecues that you've been hosting. It's good to see you.